Hi, Patty. Are you looking for a pet, but you can't have a dog, a cat, or anything with four legs? Maybe a fish is more your style. There are a ton of fish in the sea, and plenty to have in your fish tank as well. Whether it's freshwater fish or saltwater fish, you can find anything you like. Ashley here is a vet assistant at Noah's Animal Hospital. She has her own collection of exotic swimmers. She tells me that it's a lot easier to maintain a saltwater tank than it is a freshwater. I personally think it's easier than freshwater um, because there's three types of aquariums you can set, just fish. The um, levels build up faster so it's hard to maintain, just like in freshwater. Um, the easiest, I would say, is the medium one where you have live rock with the fish because it acts as a natural filter to break down the bad um, materials in there and turn it into gas and it just escapes from the aquarium. And third is a reef marine aquarium, mostly containing corals and other invertebrates. It's the most expensive to maintain and it can be challenging. Coral need to have proper lighting and they can be sensitive to changes in the water. So checking pH, calcium, magnesium, and other levels are a must. A good start to a tank is preparing the water and getting some bottom feeders such as hermit crabs or snails. They are important because of they are the initial setup. So uh, when I started my tank, that's the first thing I put in is snails and hermit crabs. Even though there was a whole lot of things, they sit there and they sift through the live sand and live rock and clean up around there and um, help establish like the good bacteria in it. As for the main colorful hues that the fish come in, they can also come in various attitudes. You should start the tank by having ones that are less aggressive, like damselfish or clownfish. Let them get adjusted to the tank, get their spot in the tank, and um, let them grow a little bit. If you, then you want to add the more aggressive ones later and a smaller size, so that way they don't bully. They tend to bully when they're the first ones in there and they're bigger than the other fish. Sometimes you want to go a little different and have some sea life, such as jellyfish. They may coexist in the sea, but you shouldn't house them with fish at any time. If you're going to get jellyfish, you're going to get a specific tank for just jellyfish. Uh, they need a cir circulation, so they flow in a certain way. Um, also, they can sting the other fish, so um, you want to have them in a specific tank by themselves. They're just as much my pets as my cats and my dogs. Um, I've named them. You know, um, some of them even create bonds with you. I, um, the white clownfish that I own, as soon as I put my hand there, she will swim up to it. Sometimes she'll even like nip at my fingers. Of course, it doesn't hurt at all. Um, but there's um, puffer fish that are known to have like dog traits that sit there and will follow your finger. They are the perfect pet if you can't have an animal in your living space because of rules or allergies. And they can turn your living space into a more colorful world. Maybe you're looking at exotic fish, freshwater fish, and even jellyfish. But you should always do your research before you buy any of these animals to know what's right for you. For Pet Pals TV, I'm Adam Dunn.